a C8 or a C10. C10. Okay, C10. Either one, they have two in the clinic. Mm -hmm. I think most of the, the technology is the C10, C10 or the C8. Okay. So that's a eight megahertz transducer. Eight million cycles per second is how many, uh, is, how many uh, is the frequency of that transducer. All right? So you will see, you will even see in the, and I'm just, this is outside of that, you even see in the clinic, they have a little hockey stick pro. Has anybody seen a little uh, pro that looks like a hockey stick? That's a 17 megahertz transducer. But no, but mostly, I want you guys to know this range for clinical imaging. That's, that's gonna be on any test you're gonna have. That's gonna be on your registry. Two megahertz to 15 megahertz is the frequency of diagnostic ultrasound, okay? That's also determined by the source, meaning that that's already determined by the manufacturer within the sound, the system itself, or the transducer, okay? In this case, it's gonna be the transducer, right? Okay. When it comes to frequency, no, we cannot, uh, the sonographer cannot uh, change the frequency of a, of a transducer. That's why we have to change probes if we need to, say for instance, I'm doing, um, I'm doing somebody's leg. I mean, I'm doing somebody. Yeah, I'm doing somebody's uh, leg, and I already. I'm already using most of the time when I'm doing a leg. They're using a linear eight, mm -hmm. a linear eight probe, an eight megahertz transducer, or a linear nine probe. Okay, but let's say, for instance, that person is man. They I can't see. I'm, that person's veins are fifteen centimeters deep. I, that that uh, eight megahertz transducer is not going to be able to penetrate that deep. So. What kind of transducer am I going to use to get that deep? Am I going to use a higher megahertz transducer or a lower megahertz transducer? I'm going to use a lower megahertz transducer because that's going to be able to travel deeper. Okay, that's going to travel deeper into the body. Remember, high frequency transducers they're they're for superficial structures. They're not going to be able to travel as deep. Okay, but higher frequency transducers have better detail. Okay, we're sacrificing detail when we're using the lower frequency transducer, but we sometimes we need that depth, especially when you think about the liver being 15, 16 centimeters down. Okay? You're not gonna be able to see that with a, a linear 12 transducer, right? A 12 megahertz transducer, you're not gonna see that. Or an eight, eight megahertz transducer, you're not gonna be able to see that. Okay? They all have their limitations. It's kind of like picking your poison. Do I need to go, <laughs> do I need to go deeper or do I need to have better image quality? That's what you're toggling between. Like you know, the bang, bang. There you go right there. There you go. Um, well, eventually, we'll, we'll, we know why. Why what? The lower the frequency, the deeper. The lower frequency, I mean, the lower they're the just deep. able to travel deeper into the body. Um, higher frequency transducers are going to be attenuated a lot faster yeah. than a lower frequency transducer. That's why. Move a lot faster, so you it think about go like deep. right, absolutely. It's happening so fast, it's, the, the cycles are being attenuated a lot faster. So, a higher frequency transducer yeah. that's going to be shallow, a lower frequency transducer is going to be able to travel deeper into the body because it's not going to be attenuated as fast as a higher frequency transducer. Okay. Okay. Remember, higher frequency. Better image detail, less depth. Lower frequency, deeper depth, less detail. Less resolution. Less, oh, well, I haven't talked about what kind of resolution yet, so I'm, I'm talking about image detail right now until we get into resolution. So it's not gonna provide as much clarity or I can say resolution to the image, okay? And that frequency is also determined by the sound source. Right. And again, that is not adjustable by the, by the sonographer. Okay. That's not going to be adjustable by the sonographer. So we cannot change the frequency. All right. Even though like special consideration, like we don't we don't change the frequency. Let's say for instance, like remember I was telling you about harmonics, right? This is it. Don't you have to write this down? I'm just telling you. Harmonics, we don't we're not changing them. We're just pushing the button and the machine is still doing it. It's, we're not actually adjusting it, it's not a turn knob, but we're turning up the frequency. Remember I told you harmonics is twice, is twice the uh, the transducer frequency. It's gonna send out twice the frequency by the machine. And that's how you're able to get blacks, blacks, and whites, white. All right. How, it's what? I 
Ta harmonic frequency is twice mm -hmm. the transducer frequency. But that's wow. the machine doing the work, though. We're not actually turning the knob to turn that up. We're just hitting one button, boom, harmonic, right? So is that saying that you're spending more, um, more cycles? Yes. It's going to, how harmonic, I don't want to get too deep in it. I was just giving you a for instance. How harmonics mm -hmm. works is it sends the transducer frequency, and right on top of that same frequency, it sends double the uh, transducer frequency, which is the harmonic frequency. But I just wanted to tell you the difference between how that works because if we're not adjusting the frequency, because by the time we get the harmonics, I don't want you guys to be confused right now. All right? When I'm talking about is it adjustable, that's saying that there's a knob, I can turn it up. Just think about the gain. That's adjustable, right? I can turn it up and turn that down. Okay? Harmonics is always this twice the transmitted frequency. Transmitted frequency is the transducer frequency. All right? Period, guys? Right now, what is the period? Period is um, the time that taken for a single cycle. Bang, I love it. That's a perfect definition right there. The time it takes to complete one cycle. So, mean, without looking, what is the frequency? Frequency is number of um, days, number of cycles in one second. Number of cycles per second. Jasmine. If we have a 15 megahertz transducer, what is our frequency? Keep going. What's our frequency? I'm asking oh, you. Like the right? 15 million cycles per second. You have to complete that. Because you just say 15, you're not telling me how frequent it's happening. Okay. Or 15 million hertz. Okay. Got it? Sweet, sweet, sweet. Well, let's talk about... Uh, this kind of is going to be a recap real quick. Before we go there, guys, let's look in the book, guys, on page 21. Everybody have page 21 open. I want to um, just take a look at the illustration, figure 3-3. Three, three. So you see in this illustration, guys, I want you guys to uh, count those waves. How many waves, even though it says it right there on, on the bottom, how many, what is the frequency of that wave right there? If it tells you that that, that is one second, what is the frequency of that wave? Four. One second. Four hertz. Four. That that's that's not. We're talking about frequency. How often? How many cycles per second? It's telling you that 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 ends at one second. So if you count those waves, one, two, three, and four, that means that that is four hertz. Okay. Mm -hmm. Four cycles per second. That's how often that's occurring. All right. All right. Let's go to the next one. Figure three, four. So this one is. This whole thing is four seconds. So what is the frequency of these waves? Eight. Two. Two hertz, two right? Hertz. Two hertz, because look how many. Oh. Two cycles happen per second. It's four, mm -hmm. the little black line are dividing the seconds right there, okay? Two cycles are happening per second. One second. In that, in that, in that section right there. So our, our frequency would be two hertz. Mm -hmm. Two hertz. Guys, we're good on that? I don't want to move on unless, you know, you guys are feeling good about that. We're good on that? Can I get a unanimous shake my hand? Adam? I'm good, but I think if you're going to ask a random question, maybe ask us a question about the... That's a random question. No, I mean, I mean, I mean like the, the numbers. No, 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 like... I think it depends on how you ask the question that I'm going to understand what you're saying. That's how I'm going to know if I'm, under, am I, if I'm actually understanding you. Okay. So, I'll give it to you. Guys, please, if you need help, please schedule a tutor and schedule a date with me, a tutor and time with me. I don't mind staying after this. Uh, I meant to tell you guys this earlier, but my tutoring days are probably best any day except for Wednesday, because I have class on Wednesday. So any day except for Wednesday, I should be available okay. for you guys. Okay. Any day except for Wednesday. All right. So let's talk um, a little bit more about uh, frequency. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, uh, more about frequency. So of course, we already know the range of audible sound. We kind of know this table right here on table 3-1. So sound is based on the ability of humans to hear it. Our infrasound range would be anything below 20 hertz, right? Mm -hmm. Our range of audible hearing for a human, our human hearing will be 20 hertz 
to 20,000 hertz, or 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, okay? And ultrasound or super, something that's supersonic would be anything over 20,000 hertz, okay? But you guys should be easy to remember, it's the range of audible sound right there, okay? This is important because it affects penetration and image quality, all right? Period and frequency are reciprocals, as you already know, but they're also inversely related, okay? So as the frequency goes up, the period would go down. Think about it, think about it. If I have, if I have a really, sh if, my, if my frequency from here, one to right here, that's gonna be one of, come on, come on, one right here, and that's one second. My, the time it takes to complete that is gonna be longer, okay? If I have a, if, I, if, my, if my cycles happen more frequently, more frequently, the time, the time it takes to complete them is gonna be shorter. I'm sorry, did I say that wrong the first time? I said that wrong the first time. Okay, the higher the frequency, how, how, the more um, events per second or cycles per second, the lower the period, the lower the time it takes it, okay? Just think about how short these are amongst each other. There's gonna be a shorter amount of time. They're inversely related. Okay? They're gonna be inversely related, okay? Just the opposite, if my frequency is lower, the, fre <coughs> the period's gonna be higher, okay? So the time on this, from one complete cycle on this, is gonna be, it's gonna take a lot longer, okay, to complete one cycle. This is the higher frequency, the time to complete one cycle is gonna be a lot shorter to complete these cycles, okay? Uh, Sorry about this speaking. We can make it to the uh, opposite for, uh, if uh, we fix the time, we have uh, Remember, one. period and frequency are not adjustable. Mm -hmm. They're determined by the sound source. We can't adjust them as sonographers. Okay. We don't change period and frequency. Yeah. We don't change the period and the frequency. Mm -hmm. uh, whatever the manufacturers uh, make, however they make those machines or however they make the transducers, it's the period and frequency are already set. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. So we can't change that. The only thing we can do to counteract that is to change our transducer. Okay. Mm -hmm. Change our transducer. Remember, oh, because frequency is going to affect the penetration and image quality. I already told you guys, this higher frequency transducer is gonna have less penetration, better image quality, all right? This lower frequency transducer is gonna have more penetration, less image quality, all right? The most important, but also frequency and period have a special relationship that the fact that they're also reciprocals, as you guys already knew that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so I do want to go through a couple of examples right here that the that the book has. Um, so the book on figure um, three point five, figure three point five. So of course that whole thing is one second. Can somebody tell me how many how many uh, frequency cycles are occurring in that one second? What is the frequency of, the, of that of those waves? So what is what is our um, what is our frequency? Eight cycles per second. Eight cycles per second are eight hertz. Mm -hmm. Eight hertz. Okay. Eight cycles per second are eight hertz. Mm -hmm. All right. So what what would be? How can we determine? Our, so our period would be one over, one eight. over eight, right? One over eight. Mm -hmm. One over eight times eight equals one. one. Correct. So if we. One over eight times eight over one. We multiply across. That's eight. That's eight equals one. Okay. So that's that's how we've proven that these two are reciprocal. We do have examples in the book as well that we can. Uh, we're gonna have more examples to do our reciprocals. Okay. But every time you multiply period and frequency, they're always gonna equal one. One set. All right. So real quick, I do want to continue about Hertz real quick, because I don't want you guys to think 
hertz means cycles per second. Hertz really means events per second, okay? Events per second. In ultrasound, our event just so happens to be cycles, okay? But hertz means, the word hertz means events, events per second. 